Here we'll talk about the three cone drill and first we're going to talk about the start. So in the start, we need to possibly switch our stance. So we need to step with our left leg first. What you see here is a, a right-handed stance and the athlete's about to start with their right, step with their right foot. But stepping with your right foot is going to cause you to take one, two, three, four, five steps because we have to touch with our right hand for this drill. So if I move forward and we watch, same drill with a left-handed stance, we step with our left foot first, one, two, three, four steps will get us to the line. So may have to practice coming out of a left-footed stance, but if you run your 10-yard split and your 40 out of a left-handed stance, you'll have a little bit better luck. Next thing I want to talk about, coming out of this first five yards, notice the angle. It didn't run straight to the cone. We want to run and make a V pattern so that we lessen the angle of this first roundabout. And I'll show you what I mean. So we have to touch with our right hand on the first five yards, and then we have to touch with our right hand again. So we want to take full advantage of the space between these two front cones here and here. And by doing that, we make it less of an angle to travel around this hoop. If I were to come from here and change direction, that sharp turn takes a lot to slow down. Anytime we turn 90 degrees, we have to come to a stop and then reaccelerate. But if I can just accelerate around this entire turn, I'm going to have a faster time. So, since we've made that angle, it makes it easier to transition all the way around the drill. So let's go back to the front. We'll get a little bit better view of the first five yards. So again, left footed stance. And this is just acceleration. The first step, we'll coach it the same as a 40. Step, step, you notice the first two steps. Well really this first step, because it's an explosive athlete, everything's projecting forward. And then you'll notice already starting to have that front foot land in front of his body to slow him down. Here's the third step. Look how far out in front of the body is and look how he is angled back the direction that he wants to go next. Last foot comes down outside the white line so he can touch it. You have these shin angles pointed that direction. You have his shoulders leaning towards the direction that he wants to go. So that center of gravity is over top of that lead foot. He pushes, crossover step. Now in this next five yards, it should take us three steps. That's the goal. One, two, three, because you got to touch with your right hand again. So he might have barely missed that line there. But you see the steps is one, two, three. Make it to the line. Again, it's a double foot push, just like the pro shuttle, double foot push. We're on the inside edge of this foot here. We're on the outside edge of this foot here. We're going to push with both legs, karaoke step across our body, and then apply force and accelerate. Now coming around this turn, we'll watch the top view first. We want to get to that top cone here by our third step. So we want to turn it on. This is one, two, and it should be an inside step a swing step, some people call it, that allows us to accelerate through. Because it's not a sharp change of direction, we don't need to plant with our outside foot because we went to that far cone. So it's a swing step, inside step at that third cone, which allows this foot, that left foot, to come down to direct me to come inside of this last cone. So let's zoom in, watch that from this view down here. Coming out of this cone, one, two, three, to inside step. This step here starts to propel me to go inside the cone so that I can come around the cone. 
and finish the test. As we watch here, we'll look at the top first. As we come into the cone, a big step to slow our body down, and then we want active feet, active arms, and notice how the shoulders remain inside of the feet as we angle through this hoop, as we'll call it. And there's several hoop drills there to practice this action. But look, it's active feet. Don't be afraid to take multiple steps here. He's able to achieve this hoop. We'll call it starting here. One, two, three, four steps. And notice the arms are active. And notice the eyes. The eyes, I feel like, are what um, a lot of people don't consider. Some people might have their eyes still gazing out this way. And when they come around here, if their eyes were still looking out towards the bleachers there, it would cause their shoulders to be turned towards the bleachers as well. It'll separate the shoulders from the hips, and it'll slow the athlete down. So from here... Let's look more at the bottom view. Look at eyes. Eyes are up, looking towards the destination. They started down. If I could just tweak something here, I'd have his eyes already looking at the cone already. But he gets him up here, and there's no shoulder turn. Now, from this point right here, after the... the uh, hoop is completed we want to see seven steps and we want to finish through that cone there the same one that we started to run this arc and the reason being is the same reason from the previous arc if we come to this cone and then sharp cut as quick as we can it would take a lot of energy and a lot of time to completely stop our body and, and round that cone at a sharp angle but if we can just accelerate through this cone and finish here we should have a more efficient test and a faster time so from this point get out of the hoop we want to try to make it back to that cone in seven steps so as we watch one two three four five six seven he finishes just before the cone so it took him seven and a and a step we'll watch the other athlete here go ahead and complete it we'll watch the whole test through first Okay, so we see the left foot step, he's accelerating, one, two, three, look how big the step is, so this is obviously less explosive of an athlete, he's 300 pounds, still does a great job, he's not as explosive as the first athlete, first set, both those steps have a forward lean and then on this third step look how much in front of him how far in front of him that step is so his body weight's going backwards last step a little past the line swipe for the line to go right into your arm action we want one two three steps here to get to the line and again he's a little bit less explosive of an athlete still young he's still putting he's still adding strength so because of this, he's got to really leap, look at this, to be able to reach that line in three steps. But that's okay. He finds himself in decent position. As you can see from the bottom frame, he's at that far cone. Now let's see how he comes around. One, two, three. As you can see, he's kind of cutting the cone short because look where his first step takes him. Again, he's a little off balance because look at the front foot where it's pointing that front foot causes him because look at if you watch down here look how different his hips are his rear hip is pointing towards the timer and his front hip is pointing the other direction it causes him to come out a little off balance and look how his first step leads him this way so now it was almost uh, all for not to go to this cone here because he's already about in line 
with these first couple cones here. And then you notice on the second step, he now has to push. If we look at the bottom frame here, this step is going to push this way. And any zigzagging is obviously going to take more time on this test. So one, two, three. He's kind of cutting the corner there because of the change of direction. When he comes into the hoop, active feet. Now that, I would like to see more choppy steps like we did with the previous athlete. Instead, he does what we kind of recommended against is he's turning it into a tight corner. He's turning it into a sharp change of direction. He's making it seem as if it's this, this, instead of a nice hoop, which doesn't require a sharp deceleration like this right here. And then secondly, you'll see in the bottom frame, because the athlete does this, The next step, step one, step two, doesn't gain any ground. They land in the same spot. Whereas if we took a couple smaller steps, we could break up that force and apply it into the ground. So again, coming around, we should see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is way short. But that rule, I should have mentioned, is more applicable. That's a goal. More applicable to faster more explosive athletes line that's gonna be tough to get there in seven let's watch one more rep here specifically looking three one two three four five six seven so that was a good example there of the athlete making it in seven steps that should be the goal if we're not able to reach that that's fine so long as we are being as efficient as we can coming around this last hoop and this right here both the athletes do a much better job on their last attempt